Hello. Today I was going to be attempting to make a cutaway of a vacuum pump that would be found in a small airplane. Uh, what the vacuum pump does is provide vacuum that would power the uh, attitude indicator and a directional gyro typically in a small airplane. And uh, these things are designed that when something breaks in here or it binds up, it has a shear piece here that will basically shear. This, this half say connects to the uh, actual drive mechanism that drives this. And the other half actually is geared into the accessory plate of the motor or engine. And uh, like I said, if it binds or anything, it shears. So at that point, this thing is not overhaulable. I think it says right here. So what you do to check this, uh, to see if this is sheared, is you would go up and rock the propeller back and forth and see if this moves. If it doesn't move, that means this is sheared and you need another vacuum pump. The other indicator is if you look at the vacuum indicator in the plane and there's no vacuum. So that would probably be the thing that would get you out here looking at this. So anyway, I, I have cutaways of uh, basically all the instruments that would be in a panel. And I had questions on a vacuum pump and uh, you know I explained how it worked and then I just decided you know why don't I have one of these so I went and asked my mechanic do you guys have any vacuum pumps and he says go pick one out of the pile because you know these things don't these things fail fairly regularly but the thing that startled me was how thick these wafers are yeah I don't want to break it before the cutaway so uh, basically this is graphite wafers and what it does is it works the same way that a, uh, a motor, an air motor would work, except for it works in reverse. This is the driven part, and it pumps the air out and uh, creates the vacuum. My old cutaways I did with a Dremel. I was trying to figure out the best way to show the air path through this. So because this is the uh, vacuum side, and it actually goes to here to here. which then goes up this side, I guess. Let me get that lined up. Oop. This and this, which have holes here. And then what this does, which I'm not going to pick this up, is this spins and actually draws a vacuum on that side and then pressurizes it out to this port and out the top, which will then just drive it here. What I was thinking about doing is putting this in the mill and going down these sides, so that way you could see these ports. On the top, where is it? I'm probably going to mill this down and then mill here and here, so you could see that. And then I'm not sure what I'm going to do on the bottom. Okay, I match marked this before I took it all apart. And uh, I'm just trying to figure out where to do the cutaways. Now on the uh, vacuum side, it's this and this. So what I figured I was going to do is take that one and maybe cut it down. And then on this one, cut it up. So that'll show the vacuum, and that'll show the exhaust, and then it's on this side is the vacuum, and this side is the exhaust. So that'll just be a reminder of what's going on where. Let me see if that'll work. This is something I have in there already for something else that I just did, machining the bottoms off of these. Um, I have to get the ones with the thinner bottoms in order to use the half-inch tools. So what I did is I bought some $13 ones and just machined the bottoms off. I didn't get that on film. I didn't think that would be that interesting, to be quite honest. Now let's see. I'm going to go up probably about halfway. Now I'm going to take it up to here. Three down. See how that looks. See if it chucks the part.
WD. That's what I usually use on aluminum. Yeah, and I know I'm using a fourth fluid on aluminum. That's what I had in there. To be quite honest, I don't have a lot of two stuff. That'll let them see what they need to see. And all I gotta do is just deburr that. And now this. Okay, just ran this on the wire wheel all the way around and I use that a lot to do burr and it does a beautiful job. So anyway, these are all deburred. I ran my finger anywhere I think somebody's gonna get cut. So that's good. So let's go back over here and see how it works. Okay, my plan was is to actually radius this so you could see the veins in the uh, vacuum pump. And uh, my etch a sketch method wasn't working, so I borrowed a four and a half inch uh, rotating plate. And uh, we got that here, started making T nuts for it, which I'll finish. But uh, we've had a cold snap, and it's in the mid 30s in my shop. Actually, it's down near 32, 33 for the last two nights. That didn't even come out last night, it was in the 20s. So, uh, I'm going on to a plan B. I'll, I'll finish this up like this later. Uh, the other thing is, is I need this for tomorrow, actually. So I'm just going to put a piece of plexi on here, which actually I think will be better because we'll get to see the whole thing. And then I'll just, you know, note that these are the ports. So what I was going to do here now is uh, mark the holes, drill two holes in the plexi, put this on, trace it, cut it out, uh, bolt it to this, chuck this in my lathe lightly, and just skim it down so that should be really quick it's like I said it's about 32 in here I don't even like turning my machines on but I'll do that just to get this done so let's get to that okay this is a piece of plexi I got I'm just going to do this real quick and dirty just to get it close uh, this this is a used piece of plexi I didn't, don't have a new piece so actually for this I can Go like that. Okay, that was literally hack a little bit, snap, hack, and snap. This is uh, about 35 degrees as well. Ah, you know what? Let me do those holes first. And I can do them with a transfer. around there okay that's one let me put a screw in there put an extra washer or two in there okay that's good turn that over Let's see how well this works temperature hell it might crack it usually I won't hit that hard there you go, right there. Okay, there's the second one. Hopefully it lines up. It does. Throw that in there. Yeah, that'll look nice once it's done. So now I'm going to go trim around here, trim around here, get it closer, and then uh, throw it on the lathe. I'm just going to Tape this, chuck it on the lathe. Tape this, chuck it on the lathe, 
and then turn it down to the outside diameter. Probably won't even unbolt it from there. Okay, just cut it and hacksaw in the vise and ground it kind of close on the uh, belt sander. And now I'm just going to put it on the uh, lathe. Sorry I didn't get that on film. It's darn cold in here. So that's the way I'm going to leave it. Um, I'm going to uh, probably round these edges, edges over in a sander real quick or just touch the edge with a torch. Uh, but that edge looks really nice. I was thinking about just doing a, uh, a chamfer on it, but I'm really close to that edge there. So let me just take it over to the sander and hit the edge. Just hit it on the sander, and uh, then I just took a uh, torch and just ran it around there very quickly just to burn off anything that was left over. So let me clean that up, put it together. I'm not even cleaning up. I'm that cold. My fingers are freezing. That gets a little ring there. Kind of like it's an alignment thing, which is kind of neat. Like that. Long one. There. Okay, that goes in there. There's only one orientation it can go. Gonna make them all the same. They said this isn't an operational thing, it's just a show. It's show and tell. I can probably look at the video and see which way they were before they popped out, but I'll do that later and I'll take it apart and clean it up a little bit. This is just for now. Like I said, I'm not going to spend out here all night freezing. This was a quick and dirty. I'm just going to throw that on there. Make a quick and dirty spacer. Thread that in there. And it's good enough because I need I need to, this is a demonstrator I was going to show tomorrow. And of course I wait till it's 20 degrees out here. Actually I have other things going on. Like the rest of us. main thing I want to say is the thickness of that because everybody's afraid of them breaking. Okay. Thanks a lot. Bye.